Okay, so you can probably tell a bit of a time skip happened because uh, now I am in my room and it is uh, 8 in the evening and I just had a shower a few minutes ago. Uh, but yeah, now that I've uh, caught up on all the episodes, let's talk about Lupin Ranger vs. Pata Ranger 7 through 13. I'm just going to quickly talk about the uh, main points of each of these episodes, why I like them. Just not going too super heavy into the plot of each of them. Uh, so anyway, starting off with episode 7, this one was a Umika-focused episode, as when they were facing a monster um, that literally uh, can eat people up and trap them in his stomach. That that was creepy imagery. Uh, Kairi and Toma end up getting eaten while protecting Umika, and this makes her remember back to when she lost her best friend, Shiho, who actually, in a similar vein, she was caught and died from uh, the ice monster Zamigo's ice powers because she pushed Umika out of the way of the attack. And I think of all three of the Lupin Ranger in terms of uh, how emotionally distraught they are over losing such important people to them with Kairi being his brother and Toma being his fiance. I think Umika is the most broken about losing Shiho because this was her best friend, her closest friend ever since she was very young because there was a scene where there were kids who were talking about Umika making fun of her because she always wore yellow clothing and Shiho was the one who stood up to her so kind of gives me the sense that, yeah, maybe Shiho was really, truly her closest friend. And also, this episode also confirms for me that Umika feels this guilt over how everyone is always having to protect her, everyone is always having to save her, and it actually made me cry, seeing Umika so distraught about everything about not being strong enough about always having to be saved over over losing Shiho and now Kairi and Toma how that made her remember that that whole sequence made me so emotional I cried like that was really good uh so what happens in this episode what she finds out in order to save Kairi and Toma is that the monster was going after these famous restaurants. So what she does is Sakuya in the beginning of the episode actually wanted to go on a date with Umika to one of the restaurants where uh, the attack happened uh, before the episode started and he was like, oh, I wanted to take her to that place. We should go to that place sometime, Umika. And she was against the idea at first, but then she calls up Sakuya and like, hey, there's this other really cool restaurant, how about we go on a date there? And that actually works. The monster appears and she is able to take out the Lupin collection piece so that it uh, basically throws up everyone that he had trapped in his stomach. Again, really interesting imagery there. Uh... But then, as we go into the epi the next episode, episode 8, towards the end of episode 7, Tsukasa actually notices through uh, Kairi and Toma and Umika's interactions with each other and their body language, she begins to see that they are acting similar to the phantom thieves that she and uh, Keiichiro and Sakuya have been chasing after. So she begins to have the hunch, you know, kind of connecting the dots that maybe these people are the same. And 
This episode, they had a very interesting way uh, Kyrie and Good Striker ended up coming with a plan so that they could keep their identity secret, which kind of boggled my mind before I actually found out what happened, which I thought was really good. Uh, and also in the episode, uh, the little robot assistant, Jim, the robot assistant to the Pata Ranger, had this really cute riddle that was solved by the end of the episode, which I really liked. If <laughs> it, You probably wouldn't be able to understand the joke if you don't understand Japanese, but sin since I understand Japanese, I found that really funny. Uh, episode 9, uh, they were after a Lupin collection, which was taking the form of a little jewel pendant that was in the possession of this uh, half-French, half-Japanese, I suppose, uh, jewelry designer. The, the actress who played the character is actually a halfie, so she could speak fluent French, and she could also speak Japanese, and she was a really good actress. Like, she had some really good uh, scenes throughout this episode. And once they retrieve that piece of the collection, they have a new item, the scissors and blade vehicle item, which is so cool, and they start using it much more frequently in the, uh, the next couple of episodes. But, uh, in the end, the monster that they were fighting against, uh, Pato Red Keichiro actually blows up the monster before Umika and Toma were able to get the Lupin collection out of his safe, so when they see it blow up, they think, oh, crap, we lost a piece of the collection, we can't have our wishes granted and bring them back. In episode 10, however, 10 is where things get really interesting. We find out that the monster actually had a total fake out and was able to create a clone of himself that blew up and he was able to escape. Which, that, that was an amazing fake out there. Like, that was really good. Also in the episode, we have the, uh, I guess the proper introduction of Zamigo. Uh, Kairi comes face to face with Zamigo and they have this really amazing fight. And Zamigo, I am already liking Zamigo as a villain because he is really, really frightening, honestly. Like his, his laugh is, pun intended, Chilling. But um bum psh. Okay. <laughs> uh, but then later on, like I said earlier, now that they have the scissors and the blade, they're able to combine that with the mech and make the Lupin Kaiser knight form, which is awesome. It's like, it's the shield and a sword. It's so cool. There's nothing else I can say about that. Uh, episode 11... This one was an interesting one. <laughs> I, uh, I don't really want to talk about this one too much because things get weird. Things get really, really, really weird. It's kind of hard. I... <sighs> Anyway, uh, in that episode, which is, this isn't too weird, we actually get some of Sakuya's, uh, backstory where we learn how he admired Keichiro and Tsugasa, who actually were promoted into the police force before he did because he was struggling, and how they were basically his inspiration that kept him going so that he could work harder to join the police force, which... Which was nice. That was like a really sweet moment amidst a whole bunch of weirdness. Oh. Uh. 
episode 12, this was kind of a Matoma focus episode. A lot of it was focused on a uh, side character, Yuki, who got his hands on a piece of the Lupin collection, which could make the person who wear it go faster. And I really liked that story with uh, the that character, Yuki. I thought uh, his acting was really good. There were some really good scenes with him. And just the story overall of like how he reacts to having this a magical bracelet, basically, and what he learns from this experience. It was really nice. Episode 13, which is the uh, one that recently aired. Such a cute episode. Just Umika and Tsukasa both got days off from their jobs, and they went to the same amusement park for a, uh, a competition at the amusement park to win a plushie. And as we know, Tsukasa loves plushies. So they happen to run into each other. And since the, uh, the singles tickets for the competition were all out, they ended up, they ended up entering the competition as a pair. And this leads to so many cute interactions between them. Like, they went down a uh, one of those roller coasters where when you drop off, there's like water splashing on you and you get wet. <laughs> like Umika knew that beforehand and Sukasa didn't, so she was like, "Why are you wearing a poncho? Wait, you don't know?" <sighs> and she's just all wet, <laughs> like her hair is dripping wet by the end. And then another cute moment is uh, when they went to a haunted house. And Tsukasa is trying to put on a brave face, being like, it's okay if you want to hold my hand. And Umika's like, nah, I'm fine. And Tsukasa is actually the one who is a super scaredy baby. I love Mama Bear Tsukasa. I love her so much. Uh, and then when they fight the monster, again, some really good interactions. Uh, Umika, she is able to, like, get a makeshift costume because they end up being trapped in the amusement park so no one can get in or get out. She's able to make a makeshift costume and wear her mask so that uh, Tsukasa doesn't know it's her. And there's a portion of the episode where they ended up getting uh, chained together like they're in handcuffs and they have this really, really good plan of how they're able to get out of the chains. Like, basically just the whole teamwork aspect of the two girl rangers of the season. Like, awesome. I'm, I'm all for it. All for it. <laughs> but yeah, those are basically my uh, basic thoughts of it. Again, I didn't want to go into too much detail into every single episode because we would most likely be here forever. Uh, so yeah, let me know your thoughts on what you thought of the episodes of Lupin Ranger and Pato Ranger. Uh, what was your favorite episodes out of these? For me, it's hinging between episode 7, which was Umika's focus, because, again, made me cry, and episode 13, because Umika and Tsukasa reaction interactions. Uh, right now, aside from Lupin Ranger and Pato Ranger, and, of course, Majin Magic Pures, I am planning on watching the entire Kamen Rider Build series, because... It was recently announced that one of my favorite actresses, Matsui Rena, is in the cast for the Kamen Rider Build movie, and I am so excited for that. I've already watched the first two episodes of Build, and now it has me really intrigued to uh, what goes on from the story from here, and what what kind of role. Rena is going to play. From what I know, all that I, we know right now is that Rena is the governor of the Hokuto region of uh, this, this, this timeline's version of Japan, basically. So yeah, that's, that's cool. She's the youngest governor, even. I'm, I'm very excited to see what the movie's gonna be like, so I will 
I will try to hurry and get caught up on the series before it comes out in August. <laughs> Alright, so hope you guys liked the video. Check out the video I did on the No Way Give No Life channel where I talked about Romeo and Juliet, uh, Produce 48, uh, Suzuki Iodine's solo debut, which I'm still kind of blown away about. <laughs> and uh, be sure to like, comment your thoughts, and I'll uh, see y'all later. Bye!